Welcome back to my YouTube channel and to my train room. If you're watching last week, you will have seen me complete the first batch of structures for Brian's layout. I still have three more to do. There is a coal dump, a loading platform, and an inclined trestle to get the tram from the loading platform up to the main terrace. I'm going to do all of those for this week's video. Originally, I was planning on splitting it into two installments, but I decided to combine both parts, which makes for a slightly longer video than I normally put out. I hope that sits well with my viewers. So without further ado, let's turn the camera around and get to work. The next structure I have to work on is the coal dump. There's a stone wall alongside the track with a mine tram running along the top of it. The first thing I need for this structure is a whole lot of frames. I need like 15 the same. And since I don't have a lot of time to make them one at a time, I've made one and now I'm going to use that to make three additional jigs out of styrene strip. That way I will be able to make them four at a time. Now, as always, for me making a wood product, I use styrene for the jig, just as if I'm making a styrene product, I will use wood for the jig. And by the time I've cut a supply of parts, those will be hard enough to use. I'm making them out of eighth inch square strip wood, which equates to about 11 inches square. At the bottom of the jig, I've allowed for extra length, so I don't have to cut them accurately. I've just got to make sure I've got the one angle at 45 degrees. The long pieces need to be a minimum of 65 or 66. And for this sort of work, you can't really do better than an old mitre box. I have to ease them out gently because the jigs are quite tight and I don't really want to break any because any I break I've got to rebuild. Let's assemble another batch. I finished making all my frame pieces. I have 17 of them. In theory, I only need 15, so I've allowed for a couple of breakages. I've drawn out a full size pattern for the overall structure. You'll notice that unlike the jig, which I made out of styrene, this I've drawn on paper. I'm just gonna put small dots of wood glue on each one, tack them to the paper, and then when everything is finished and, and hard and strong, I will tear the paper off the back and then sand off any residue. I'm going to make my purlins from scale 6x6 six six, and then there's going to be another member down here. I'm going to use one of these 6x12s, I think it's a more appropriate size. Well, I've given the glue time to set, even with just the first two strips on, it's already pretty strong. I now need to get 
three more purlins evenly spaced along the top diagonal. I've cut some styrene strips. I need to make multiple shorter pieces so I can support it in several places. Now that I've peeled the frame off the backing, I'm going to use a piece of sandpaper to gently remove the glue from the back. Well, all the big lumps have gone now, but there's a few places where there's a little bit of residue stuck out the sides. And I'm just going to clean that up with my craft knife. And that is now ready for the next step, which is cutting off the excess length of all the purlins. I'm going to do that gently with a razor saw. And once I've got the first one cut off, the end frame will, hold, will guide the saw nicely for me. Well, I now have the frame all nicely cleaned up. For the decking, I'm using this random scribe siding from Northeastern Scale Lumber. Since it's well back from the edge of the layout, I'm not even going to think about putting individual boards on. I think the randomness will look better anyway. I've got to chamfer the back corner to get it closer at the top. Going along the lower edge now with my knife, just shortening a few boards very slightly. This is one structure where I don't think the builders would be particularly worried about uh, getting all the boards precisely the same length. Close would be good enough. Now to stop the coal falling off the end when it gets dumped, I want some kind of end rib. So I'm going to put a piece of scale 6x12 on edge. It needs to be cut to the same length as the other boards, 31 millimeters. That is now all ready for paint. One of the other miscellaneous structures I have to build is a freight transshipment platform. So what I have here is a sample of the track and road bed that we used on Brian's layout. And one of my own flat cars 
and I'm just going to get an overall height from the bench work comes out at 22 millimeters so that is my overall height I then have to figure out what the structure is going to be I've got all the decking the purlins and the frame subtract all that from 22 and that will give me my post height and since it has a, a lot of wood framing it's another good candidate for a jig so I've assembled this one the top pieces I calculated needed to be 52 millimeters wide and the legs 15 so I'm going to cut some of this now I'm using scale 8 by 8 for this and what I'm going to do is put some lines in my mitre box so I can cut several pieces in one go so line at 52 and a line at 15 Well, I've pulled the first batch of framing out of the jig. I've got another one setting up. And now I can install the second diagonal on the other side of the frame. Now that I have all the leg assemblies built, I'm going to start assembling the platform upside down on this sheet of paper. I've cut six stringers from my eight inch square strip wood. At the moment, they're still quite a bit longer than they need to be. I will trim them later. Now at the moment it will still be fairly fragile but eventually it will have bracing on it diagonals that will hold everything together of course ironically i have to let it harden up a little bit before i can put these on otherwise i'll probably destroy the whole thing trying to install them Well, with the frame for the loading platform now complete, all I have left to do is deck it. And for this, I'm going to use scale 2x12s. Now, the tram goes down this side here, 
resting on the first two stringers. And I have to cut my 2x12s so that they finish about a third of the way onto this one. Right, that's where I want my decking to end. And I need to overhang this side slightly. So I think they need to be about 41 and a half to 42 millimeters. Well, the last structure I need to build for Brian for this trip is the incline trestle for the mine tram to get from the loading dock up onto the terrace. Since I need a lot of repetitive parts, it's a good candidate for another jig. And yes, I know this might look like a bar graph, but I assure you it isn't. I've cut all the pieces to make 18 bents of six different heights. Well, I have my coal dump, my loading dock, and all the bends for the tram incline already done. I've left these last two stringers long because they'll probably go to the start of the trestle. I can always cut them off later. All that remains to do now is to paint them. I was quite pleased with the colour that the storage building ended up, and that was just uh, regular brown oxide straight from the bottle. So I'm going to do that. Well, I had a slight change of plan. I decided that rather than try to brush paint all this, I felt that two minutes with a spray can beats two hours with a brush. And I think the result's better anyway. So I went back and re-sprayed all the trestle bents as well. I'm not going to weather them here. I'm going to pack them up as they are and weather them in situ on the layout. That way I'll be consistent with everything else. Well that completes this batch of structures for Brian's Mining Town. Next week we'll fly off to California and get them all installed. I hope you've enjoyed the series and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks for watching and bye for now.